Hey guys, it's Multiplier. Today we're looking at Serum and in particular we're looking at the LFOs. Now they are called LFOs and they can do some LFO stuff, but really they are also envelopes, looped envelopes, arpeggiators, steppers, performers, if you want to use the words that Massive uses. You can do all these amazing things and you can do them all in a really precise way as well and in a really controlled way. So I think they're amazing. They're by far the best LFOs or envelopes I've ever seen before. So hopefully these tips and tricks will allow you to make some cooler sounds or at least have more control over stuff you've made. So what I've done to demonstrate the LFO in action, I've got a very, very simple sound. All I've done is set up the Reese Mess 5 wavetable that comes built into Serum. I have the LFO mapped to the wavetable position and then I've also mapped it to the cutoff of a low pass filter, which is again, a standard thing you do in synthesizing sounds. It's a pretty simple sound, but it gives you a flavor of the movement. So we can really focus in on what the LFO is actually doing and not on the overall sound. So let's have a look at some cool stuff you can do with LFO. So if we run you through the basics, first of all, that you might have seen, you might not have seen. When you first start playing around, you've probably seen me have a few things like the rate here. And then you can also hop out of uh, sync mode. So you can hop out of BPM and this way you can have it just is whatever value you want. That doesn't sync up to the BPM of your overall track, but we'll leave it back on BPM mode for now. So we've got the rate here. You may notice that it's not actually starting the LFO at the same point every time, but normally every time we trigger a note, we want it to start at exactly the same point so we can have control over the sound. So what we want to do is hit this trigger button here and now. Maybe if we make it smaller, we'll hear it more obviously. See how it's always start at the beginning? That's something that most of the time we do. So you pretty much get in the habit of just hitting trigger every time you want to set up an LFO. So we have trigger, but maybe we want to actually start at a different point because maybe we've set up this cool shape, but we want it to start from this node here in the middle. Well, we can do that by right clicking, set start point here. We see the little S. And now it's starting from that particular point. You've also probably played around and you realize you can drag these nodes about, you can put them wherever you like, you can change the shape. Uh, you can probably even double click to add in a new node. You might have seen that, you might not. So you can pull them around, which is pretty cool, and then come up with whatever shape you want. <laughs> which is pretty cool, but you notice how it's not really that accurate. But what we can do, we can actually snap it to a particular division. And this becomes especially useful when we have BPM triggered and the overall length of the LFO is a, some sort of division of the overall track. So at the moment, this whole looped section is a bar long because it's just a bar there. So if we change this grid division to say 16, and then what we can do, if we now hold the Option key, which is the one, the weird little symbol below Alt on a Mac, or press Alt on Windows, then whenever we drag a node about, it actually snaps to a division, which I think is amazing, because it allows you to do lots of cool things. So first of all, it allows you to set up really particular shapes. So if you want to set up a particular riff, a particular pattern for your track, or maybe you want to set up some sort of sidechain compression effect, you can do all that stuff really, really accurately by setting a, a bar division and moving the nodes around to exactly where you want. So something as well, I thought was pretty cool is as you're moving these these nodes around to change the curviness of that particular line bit if you hold the option key while moving that around notice how it's changing all of them at the same time I just think that works really really nicely and it gives it a really nice uniform coherent feel to the modulations if they're all the same amount of curviness so just holding down the option key <laughs> So especially once you have a really complicated set of modulations, so if we set lots and lots of nodes here, what can happen is if you're dragging them around manually, it starts to sound a little bit, just a bit disjointed. Whereas if you do this little trick of, of grabbing one of the nodes, holding down the option key, all the modulations just start to make a lot more sense. So maybe you have something like that. See how it just makes a lot more sense. It just sounds a lot more coherent. So if you are struggling with creating a really complicated dubstep riff, for example, and you're finding that all your modulations aren't that coherent, try that little trick. It's something that I think is incredibly useful. But another thing related to this is creating the equivalent in massive of a stepper, or I mean, if I just show you, that's the best thing to do. So if you hold shift while you're clicking, what that does is it actually sets these cool divisions. So depending on the actual grid, grid size of your overall thing. So remember we're on grid eight, if we change this to say 16, that would change naturally the, the spacing of these steps. We can add in all these steps and this allows us to create a different sort of modulation. 
So this is where we could create an arpeggio if we really wanted. So we now have this stepper effect where we can draw in these modulations to do lots of cool stuff. Now, typically we wouldn't necessarily map it to the wavetable position like this, but we can map this to another parameter. But what you may find is, yes, this is a bit bumpy, but we've got this really cool parameter called smooth. So if you're here at the moment, so we'll jump about it. If we now change this smooth, it smooths it out. You can't see these changes actually happening, but it's a useful thing to be aware of because sometimes if you don't want this stepper effect, but you want it to just be smoothed out very slightly, it's a really nice parameter. At the far extreme, it tends to flatten out the entire LFO. But if you just want to smoothen out these steps in a really logical, really nice way, I think I, should, I think it's really, really good. But if we have a look at a normal LFO just to demonstrate the rise feature. So we'll choose something a bit more basic, something like dome. We'll hop out of BPM so we can get the wobbles a bit faster. So if you have a really fast wobble, something that you could, was quite common to do is to have that LFO come in more gradually. So when you start the note, it doesn't start that super wobble, but it just gets more and more wobbly over time. That's where this rise comes in. And the nice thing is it even gives you a number of seconds before the rise hits. So as we pull this rise up to say two and a half seconds, See how the wobble starts to come in? The rise is the LFO coming in. Naturally, we can change that to taste. And the reason why I think that's super, super good is it just saves you having to use another envelope or another LFO. In most synths, what you'd have to do is, in fact, map probably an envelope, to be honest. You'd map one of the, one of the spare envelopes to the amplitude of the LFO or to something like that. Or if you had masses, you could use one of the internal envelopes. This gives you one nice parameter. There's no rooting about. It's one of the great things about Serum. Everything you need is just a button or two clicks away. Similarly, we have a delay. So if we get rid of the rise, we can use the rise and the delay in like a combination, sometimes quite nice. This delay just is a bit of time before the actual LFO starts. So. See, there's a second and a half delay. Normally, it's best to have some sort of combination of rise and delay. And then finally, I want to have a look at envelopes. And this is something that I guess I should have started with, but I think it's one of the coolest things about it. And it's the fact that you can turn any of these LFOs into envelopes. And in particular, you can also turn them into looped envelopes. So I guess when we're looking at it, you can have them as LFOs with a, a bit at the beginning. It, it's just really, really powerful. So what we could do, if we hit this on button over here, what this means, if you now have a look at this, just goes through once. So it's, it's an envelope now. So we can set it up to do a normal envelope -y thing, except we could add in loads of nodes. We can add in this. How cool is that? So all of these four LFOs are in fact envelopes essentially. And we can do something even cooler and that is looped envelope. So let's say we have this envelope shape. If we now right click here and do set loop back point here, then what this will do, we see this little L and that means it will loop from that node here to the end and it will just loop back through that section. So one thing you may have heard is it's worth keeping your eye on this loop back point to make sure that you don't get a weird intersection happening because it's it's finishing here. You want it to start at the same point. So we in fact want to pull that down there. And now the modulations will be a lot smoother. And then there's one final little useful trick. When it comes to actually drawing in your shapes here, especially once you have lots of nodes doing lots of cool modulations, it's quite useful to know, I think, that you can drag multiple nodes around at the same time. So let's maybe add in, let's say we like this particular bit here, from here to here to here. If we just use our mouse and select those three points at the same time, see how they're now red? You can now drag these about as one unit, which I think is pretty cool. Just a nice little trick to finish up on. I've been Multiply. Hope you enjoyed.